We hope you enjoyed watching the two videos depicting some of the wildlife at Barrett Pool Bird Sanctuary. We've now arrived at the Shambal River Sanctuary. The day is pleasantly warm, which is something of a relief after the cold and fog of Barrett Pool. The sanctuary was set up in 1979 and is one of the cleanest rivers in India. After a visit to the unisex restroom, we embarked on a relaxing but memorable cruise on the Shambal River. At times, videography was something of a challenge in a moving rocky boat. The Shambal River supports two crocodilians, the Mugger Crocodile and the largest population of gharials in the wild. The gharial is one of the largest crocodilians, second only to the Australian saltwater crocodile. It is listed as critically endangered on the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species. The rocky slopes could be a thoroughfare for the local people, or perhaps a water stop for these donkeys. To be up so close to the Indian skimmers was fantastic. They were quite abundant and the Shambal River is the only known place where they are recorded in large numbers. Their mandibles are so designed that as they fly low over the water, the lower mandible ploughs along the surface of the water to pick up aquatic prey. In amongst the many mugger crocs and gharials, other birds that we sighted included this Indian cormorant, quick glimpse as the boat sped past of a bar-tailed swallow, woolly neck storks, river lapwing, Egyptian vultures or river vultures, Eurasian spoonbills, a lager falcon with a tasty meal, white-browed wagtails. This is a newly hatched gharial and like all gharials is a fish-eating crocodilian. Its elongated narrow snout and razor-sharp teeth are ideally suited for slippery fish. We think this might be the red-crowned roofed turtle and perhaps it's one of the eight rare species of turtle that the Shambal River supports. A grey heron, black ibis. We saw a number of seven month old baby mugger crocodiles soaking up the warmth on the rocks. Spotted owlet in a nice hole in the rock. Osprey. common kestrel, bar-headed geese, lesser whistling ducks, so named because their call resembles a whistle, great thick knee. Given the presence of these two crocodilians, it simply amazed us that the local people used the river and its bank for their stock. Growing all kinds of crops such as these bright yellow mustard plants, This looks like a social gathering to do the laundry, but no doubt they keep a watchful eye, particularly for the mugger crocodile. This mainly freshwater crocodile is considered to be occasionally dangerous to humans. It's quite mobile and can go considerable distances on land. However, it is not as dangerous as the larger saltwater crocodile. These are Brahmini or shell ducks, together with black-winged stilts and at least one green shank, as well as some other smaller waders. All too soon it was time to leave the Shambal River and head off for a visit to the Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal complex is set around a large square garden. Most people probably know the love story that brought about its construction by Shah Jahan in the 17th century in memory of his third wife who died giving birth to their 14th child. The Shah chose white marble inlaid with precious and semi-precious stones for the building of the Taj Mahal and it was built in stages taking about 22 years to complete. We managed to capture on camera these birds around the Taj Mahal complex. 
beautiful rose-ringed parakeet against the blue sky, a black and white heron, and black kites. Before visiting Agra Fort, we stopped to witness the marble inlay work, which was introduced in the 17th century and continues to be part of Agra's cultural heritage. Designs are chosen, the colour scheme set, and gems, semi-precious stones and marble are selected all by the master craftsman. The stones are then individually shaped and inlaid into the exact size grooves which have been chiselled out of the marble and the finished work of art is then hand polished ready for purchase. Another UNESCO World Heritage Site is the Agra Fort which is something akin to a walled city. The first Sultan of Delhi lived in and governed the country from the fort in the 15th and 16th centuries. The great moguls of the 16th century influenced the inlay work in white marble in the Delhi Gate, but it's not as exquisite as the inlay work of the Taj Mahal. We left busy Agra to embark on the final leg of our visit, the Kanhar Tiger Reserve. The video of our time there can be seen on Kanhar Tiger Reserve, January 2013. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to view our still photos, please visit our website. Canvas prints, cards and magnets of these pictures and more can be purchased on our website http colon forward slash forward slash jrphotography.webplus.net.